going to do the maximum subarray problem here or the largest continuous sum, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you get a list or an array and you want to find the, uh, the maximum sum of uh, you know any continuous numbers throughout it. So if, if you want to make it extremely complicated, you can read Wikipedia and you get this god-awful thing. Let me see if I could even read this. M equals max L and L equals the sum <laughs> of the array indices of X from I through J. What the hell is this? Yeah, obviously if they're all positive, you sum the array. <laughs> if they're all negative, then you just find the smallest one. Um, yeah, there could be multiple subarrays. Um, that's cool. I thought it would be fun to go through the brute force approach and then highlight how freaking slow it is if the problem size gets bigger. So this is written in uh, C? Maybe, yeah, it's C. It looks like JavaScript, but it has type declarations. Um, let's write it in Python. So I have an array here, and I made it myself, so I should know the answer. This is going to be 6, and then it drops down to negative 3, and then you get 12 here, and then it wipes out all the progress you ever made, and then you have 10. So this should be 12. So let's see if we can code this up. Brute force max subarray brute and it's going to take an input array. Now, the thing I like to do when I'm trying to figure out how to iterate over some data structure, especially when you have to iterate twice, is just start printing stuff out. So let's take, you know, for x in range length of data, um, and for j in range length of data, let's just print what data is at the x jth slice or from x to j. So we'll just call that function here on data. And okay, so I've got an empty one. That's cool. We're just doing this in the stupid way. One, two. Do I get, I'm just basically, like, do I get through the entire thing? And you'll see that no, I'm not getting through the entire thing. Um, it's only going up to the n minus 1 uh, index. So I'm just going to put that length of data plus 1, see if that solves the problem. That's not going to solve the problem. It actually has to go under your jth iteration. Actually, wait. It's kind of late here. 99.2, no. Yeah, data plus one isn't anything, <laughs> you dumbass. Okay, try it again. Okay, so that looks like now we're getting you know the entire array, one, two, three. Now when we start at two again, we build up to two through eight. Okay, so that's cool. So we are getting the, uh, we're iterating over the array entirely and then starting from the second element then starting from the third. So these are all, you know, possible candidate subarrays. Um, and if we wanted to, you know, just minimize the, the printing here, you know, we could do that, because if on an empty array, it's not going to evaluate to anything, of course. So that's one way to clean it up a little bit. So what do we need to keep track of, though? We need to keep track of some idea of an absolute maximum value. So I'll say, or global, don't do that, max, <laughs> is going to be equal to zero. Um, so we're going to want to say something like if, uh, you know, right, if you sum this up, right, so let's, if you sum that up, you're going to be getting the sum of whatever this array is as we increment through it. So we're going to say the current max is going to be equal to that. And then only if the current max is greater than our global max, we're going to want to reset the global max. So if current max is greater than global max, well, we want to say global max equals current max. And after we do that, we should have a global max val 
that is uh, the highest of any of these values. If we, you know, if we kept summing these, what's the best we would get? And I think what I'll do is just print out current max, just in case you're not quite seeing it. So yeah, it's like, um, what do we have here? Where is the 12? Do we have a 12 anywhere? Where is the 12? There it is, 12. Okay. So, and let me print out current max, but also print out the data so it's eminently clear what's happening. I don't know if that's a word, eminently. But yeah, where's our 12? Five and seven, that's our biggest one. Cool, so I'm gonna uncomment that print statement for a second because it's making a racket. And good. So we got the right answer. I think another you know thing people like, what are the indices, right? What the hell is an indice? It just means you know you found the largest contiguous subarray. Where was it? So basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be lazy and just create a new a new variable. Use memory. I'm going to say indices. And whenever this thing happens, whenever we kind of update our current max and the global max, something good happened there. So I'm going to say indices append um, x and j and we're going to return not only the global max but we're going to return the indices I think let's see what that does did I spell something wrong yeah I, I didn't that's not yeah there you go what it, append takes one argument okay I'll give it a tuple that sounds good give it a tuple okay so what is it doing here notice that I probably only want the most recent thing that was appended to it like yeah these are going to be the indices where a, a value was updated what you know we started getting better values for our maximum subarray but I really just want the last one if you know anything about Python you can pop the last element of a list off so one, two, three, four o'clock rock or pop, you get the last one, right? So that'll just return the last one so we can think about that. So that's gonna return four to six. Um, we know that it's gonna be here. So zero, one, two, three, four. And because of the way we're kind of iterating over the jth value, we're gonna to have to return j minus one. And that should show at four and five. So that's kind of cool. The max value is 12 and it is due to the values at four and five in the array. So uh, it's kind of neat. Now, what if we wanted to see how long it takes? It's not a quick algorithm because it's, what is it running? O of n to the second? Yeah, that sucks. People like n log n or n, you know, dictionary lookup. So let's show you why it's so slow. Uh, I'm going to use NumPy. <clears throat> NumPy to do this. Uh, random, random int. Trying to find a way to get random integers, random integers. NP random, random integers. Let's get the help on that. Low, high, size. Low, high, size. So I'll say negative, negative 200 to 300 and size equals, you know, 10. What's deprecated now? This function is deprecated. All right, whatever. Still return data. Um, so that's cool. That's how we're going to, and another thing to time, that'll give us time. So what we want to do is, is call this function on this random array of integers. So that wasn't bad. The, um, and let me just make sure I'm not doing something wacky here. Right, so what I did was I, uh, I coded this function with the data even. So yeah, you need to go back and make sure you didn't hard code a, a value into your function there. 
it should still be the same. But now it's going to give you a different result down here. So, okay, the maximum subarray for that NumPy array of random integers between negative 200 and positive 300, which had 10 elements, was 417, and it occurred uh, from 1 through 6. Just run it again. At 396, occurred 6 through 9. Okay, how long did that take? It took 500, you know, total 1.03 milliseconds. All right, let's do it again, but let's increase the size by an order of magnitude. So it went from 1.03 milliseconds to 7 milliseconds. That's not good. Let's increase it to 1,000. Size equals 1,000. 527 milliseconds. That's not that bad. Let's try it again. 520. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you're going from 100 to 1000 and you're going from 7.2 ms to 520 ms. So, you know, the, the problem, the, the computational trade off of doing something where you have these nested lists is, is pretty grotesque. So I think it's a fun problem to code up just to, you know, get better with dealing with arrays and data structures in Python. But, uh, you know, obviously it, it is slow. Let's see if it runs with 10,000. See how long it takes. If it doesn't come back in uh, relatively soon, I'm just going to kill the video. But. Da -da -da -da. Still here. Well, it's been fun, but uh, I have better things to do, so maybe you learned something. Hopefully, you had some fun.